Hello and welcome. Wow, this is very strange because I'm talking to nobody. So I don't know if you guys are reacting or can even hear or see me. Um, I'm assuming you can. So, okay, hi. I see a hi from someone. We hear you and see you. Okay, I see you. Okay, perfect. I actually am going to need all that chatting as much as possible because this is mad awkward talking to a black screen. But um, I'm excited. This is... So when they asked me to teach a class, there's different options. It was one on like, how do you start a brand or are staying creative or blah, 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 or blah, blah, blah. And I thought for me, the thing that I was best at is brand building and building a brand out. I think that's not so much focusing on manufacturing, not so much focusing on business, but actually building a story and a brand. So we wrote down when we were discussing this class, um, can you guys hear the train? I'm in Brooklyn, so we live right next to a train, which is hilarious. But if you hear the train throughout the class, that's the reason. Um, okay, so everyone can hear me. So we wrote down a list of things kind of to discuss my life and my process and how I came to create Kid Super and then ultimately help you guys build your own brand or work with a brand depending on what you want. So um, I think in case for all those people that don't know who I am, um, there's like a hundred of you in here. So I'm assuming not all of you know who I am. I'll give you a little background. And I think it's funny for this class to be right now because we just dropped a Puma collection about an hour ago and we had as many fuck ups as possible. So even when you're doing a full global Puma collab, there's still the trial and errors of running a brand. So I'll talk about that. And yeah, so let's start with, um, let's start with my background. Okay, so where I grew up, and everything for me, this is going to be quick because it's not all about me. It's more about you guys, but I will talk about it. So I was, my childhood was moving around a lot. So I was born in New York. I moved to Chicago. I moved back to New York. I moved to Mexico and then I moved to Wisconsin and I moved back to New York. So I was experiencing all these wildly different uh, people, socio classes, cultures, everything. So I would go from New York City to Mexico, from Mexico to Middle America and Beloit, Wisconsin. And it was each moment for me was this like brand new, like summer camp experience where I was like, oh my God, I don't know how long I'll be here, but I'm column. Let's be best friends. Let's make the most of it. So I kind of at a weirdly young age had that mindset where it was like, wow, this is amazing. Let's try to make this the best time of our lives because in the back of my head, I thought I was going to move and I was never going to be there. So I always, because it started moving so young, I always thought like, fuck, I got to make the best of this. So take that as like a little, uh, a little moment of why I became or who I became. So then when I was 12 years old, I moved back to New York City and I moved from Beloit, Wisconsin, where Beloit, Wisconsin, you bought your shoes, your clothes, your groceries, your bikes, and your guns, <laughs> whoever bought guns, in the same spot, basically at the Walmart. So I was jumped from that into Brooklyn, New York, where lit, the cool guy wasn't the jock. It wasn't the straight A student, the cool guy or the cool girl was the person who dressed the best. And so every day was a fashion show. And so if you wore the same clothes every day, uh, they would make fun of you or it would be like, oh, you're not a fresh kid, blah, blah, blah. So I came from Wisconsin where I wore the same outfit every day. Uh, I didn't care about fashion at all, but I had my mom and my dad were both my dad is like a crazy wild guy that's like a mathematician and my mom's like an artist type, also crazy woman. So I had always grown up quite artistic. And so when I got to high school, I was like, man, this like 
clothing and determining your coolness is so fucked up because it's a little bit about wealth, right? There was, and it was about hustling and wealth. There were kids that weren't wealthy that would camp overnight, buy clothes and sell clothes and wear it. But this obsession with clothing to be cool kind of rubbed me the wrong way. So me and my, so I was like, fuck it. Let me start making my own clothes. And so we were making t-shirts as birthday presents for different people, right? So the first thing I did was a spray paint stencil. I wore it to class every day. And then uh, slowly people started asking for it. And then I started making t-shirts for people's birthdays and I kind of became the t-shirt kid. And so fast forward, I'm probably like a sophomore in high school now. Fast forward, I have a group of friends and we're kind of like, man, Bape, Supreme, uh, Mishka, like we don't need that to be cool. We can make our own clothes. So we started making our own clothes. But there was never a moment where I was like, oh, wow, this is our big master plan. What are we going to do? It was really like we would go home after school and in our basements or my friend's basement because I didn't have a basement because I live in an apartment, but uh, we'd screen print. And so it was just a hobby that we were starting. So that was my uh, intro into uh, clothing and why I started. And I remember this was like, I think this is kind of one of the more important stories in uh, the kids super world uh, was so me and 10 friends launched a brand. It was called bots brick oven t-shirts, right? Short for bots. And it was all about fresh out the oven and New York City and brick oven pizza, but in clothes. And like our big plan, and I still want to do this, was you would deliver t-shirts in pizza boxes. And that was like, no one was doing that at the time. We thought it was really cool. So I remember I'm 15 and I go to the, a really popular streetwear store in New York City called Blades. And I walk into the store and I'm like, can I speak to the manager? And at the time I'm 15, I probably look about eight years old. Um, I'll show you pictures of me in high school, but uh, I look super, super young. And I'm like, hey, where's the manager? I would like him to sell my clothes. And the guy's like, I'm the manager, which probably wasn't the manager. But I show him the t-shirt and he's like, oh, cool t-shirt. What's the brand? And I'm like, who cares about the brand? You like the t-shirt. And he's like, yeah, the t-shirt's cool, but what's the brand? I'm like, but it doesn't matter what the brand is. If you like the t-shirt, it should sell. This is a store. It sells cool t-shirts. Who gives a fuck about the brand? And he was like, no, like, where's the tag? What's the brand? What's the story? And I remember being like, wow, this was my aha epiphany moment where I was like, man, the brand is more important than the design. No one cares about the design. They care about what the brand is, what the brand represents. A cool t-shirt is a cool t-shirt, but a a brand is really what makes or or breaks it. So I think this is the perfect story for brand building because I remember going back to my friends and being like, the t-shirts don't matter, guys. We need the story. What does brick oven t-shirts mean? What's bots? We need a website. We need a tag. We need a whole branding. And so then when I was, I was like, I'm going to go back with blades and it's going to have a line sheet and this whole story and a lookbook and this meaning and what we represent. We're kids from New York City trying for it. Anyways, fast forward, we drop about three or four t-shirts in high school and we sell them only to our friends in the cafeteria and we can't figure out how to sell to not our friends. And now it's obviously different because seven, eight, ten years ago, Instagram didn't exist. Now you just, if you get a big Instagram following, you can reach a lot of people. But at that time, it was really like brick and mortars and online, but how are people finding out about you? So there was 10 of us in this brand and we ended up breaking up because 10 people with one idea is really difficult. I think another thing uh, for anyone looking to start a brand is like, you need one clear vision. You don't wanna be fighting over the vision. You know what I mean? Have someone with the vision, someone that's gonna do the, the, the other roles. But I think it's always detrimental when two people have two different visions and you're competing and the ego gets involved and 
someone needs to take the front and someone needs to take the back and it doesn't really matter who even if the vision isn't better than this vision it's more important to just go for something and compete it if you're gonna fucking battle over visions and never do anything it's not worth it so i think you have to be aware with yourself and am, am i the vision person or am i going to help the vision etc anyways we had 10 kids who all thought they had a vision and we broke up and we went to uh, actually high school was ending. So easy to break up, no hard feelings. And I Beyonce the group because uh, I ended up going solo, <laughs> but before high school uh, or before college, I deferred for a year and I went to play professional soccer in Brazil, which if you didn't know, uh, I'm very good at so or I was very good. I'm very good at soccer and soccer was always a huge passion. And that's why this Puma collection is so meaningful to me. And another reason why Puma was so willing to work with me is because they knew my passion for soccer and the brand was sincere. Um, so I think that's also important to be sincere with what you do. So anyways, I go play soccer and the soccer lifestyle is you train in the morning and then you have tons of off time right? And I didn't speak Portuguese. So I had a lot of downtime where I was like, oh, let me just continue designing clothes because it was something that became part of my life and I like doing it. Anyways, a year later after soccer, I ended up going to college because the soccer thing wasn't, it wasn't that it wasn't panning out, but it wasn't panning out and whatever. That's a whole story for itself. Anyways, I go to college and I'm on the soccer team at college. It's at NYU. And one of my, the first player I meet in college, he introduces me to his roommate. His roommate, I'm like, oh, what do you do? He's like, well, I build websites. And I was like, stop. You're my Steve Wozniak. I'm your Steve Jobs. We're going to create Apple together. I was like, I've been waiting for someone to meet to build a website because that's how I'm going to reach a bigger market. I was like, that's how I can sell t-shirts. I can build a website. And at the time, it wasn't as easy as it is now to build a website. So, which is crazy how much the world's changed in just five, six, seven, ten 10 years. Anyways, we launched this brand, this, uh, and I'd thought of Kid Super before, right? And so I was, when I went Beyonce on my friends, I was like, okay, what's going to be my brand? Because I was, as I said before, having one vision is really important. So I was like, what's going to be the next, um, what's going to be my brand that I'm going to uh, dive into and picking a name is quite difficult because sometimes it's meaningless and sometimes it's incredibly important and it kind of depends on how you use your name um like is nike the fact that it's a greek god important probably not but the fact that it we don't really know what it means like adidas and nike it kind of works Anyways, so I had a brand called Scram at the time, and Scram was very streetwear. It was all about graffiti and skating. Scram, like S -s 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 Scram, the kind of anti-establishment, uh, fuck the man type of brand. I just really wasn't a skateboarder. I really wasn't a graffiti artist. I had done a little bit of graffiti. I had done a little bit of wheat pasting. I could kickflip but it wasn't really truly who I was. So I was like, man, this brand isn't truly authentic to me. I mean, I will loved, I always emulated and loved real skateboard brands, but I really wasn't that. So, um, but I always loved the name Scram. And then Kid Super came when me and my friends were jokingly freestyle rapping. And I was like, I'm super kid, da -da -da boom. And someone was like, oh, it's Kid Super. And I was like, wow, Kid Super is a great streetwear name. And I remember being like, no, I'm stuck with Scram. I'm stuck with Scram because, you know, picking is once you die, give yourself to a name, you're like, I must choose it. And then I was like, but Kid Super just works, man. I was like, I am young. I do think things are uh, amazing and possible. I always wanted to be like this superhero figure. And I love that Kid Super pushed me to be a superhero you know what i mean it was demanding me to be better i was like if i call the brand kid super i gotta be super or at least try and so i, I kept coming back to it and i was like fuck it this is what represents me and it's something that i can grow with and what i loved is like kid super record sounds really good kid super media kid super tv kid super cartoons da, da, da. and uh 
I also love that uh, I felt that it always, every single person can relate to this kid super idea. All of you watching me right now have a little kid super in you, you know? That's that childlike sense of wonder when you were two or three and being like, what do you want to be? And you're like, an astronaut, the president, the whatever, professional athlete. Like you had these dreams that you could be anything. And I wanted to capture that spirit. And I remember when I was really young or in high school and middle school, I was always getting in trouble with the teachers because I was incredibly talkative and uh, fucked around a lot, but I was really good in school. So I'd be like, you can't be mad at me if I'm getting a hundred on the test. And I would always fight with adults, right? And I'd be like, why? I was like, how did you lose that child in you? I was like, can't you relate to me being super energetic and trying to be have fun and blah, blah, blah. Like, like, why are you being such fucking negative Nancy's? So I was like, how did you lose your kid super? So anyways, the kid super brand, beautiful. And uh, fuck, is that my introduction? I think I have some more. Oh yeah, I went to NYU uh, for mathematics, which also people are always shocked about, but I said I was very good in school. And I always thought school was really supposed to be challenging and not fun not fun really and for me math and math was something that was difficult and challenging but something i was always good at and i knew i could apply it to anything i was like whatever i learn in college at least i can apply it to become a engineer uh a con economist or whatever economic person finance person I could, I don't know, do math, whatever. It was a good thing to building block. And I always found fashion and clothes and art so much fun and such a passion project that I didn't think I could study it, which is a horrible, probably because my parents are like European and their parents are strict European uh, religious people that made them suffer and deep down my suffering I thought I should suffer in college whatever but that's to tell you guys that you don't necessarily need to study fashion to get into it because while everybody was studying fashion I was doing it right so my learning wasn't for a class it was for the world right so I'd be like okay let's say a class homework for fashion was like design a collection uh, that's about what soccer, whatever. I would design a collection that's about soccer, but release it and get feedback and learn through trial and error. And so I think this is a good point for me to show you just pictures of how I started out. So anyways, soft, freshman year of high school, I build the website, right? And this is a long story, but fuck it. It's a good story. So I've just launched Kid Super, the clothing brand. And I knew from before, from walking into Blades, that you needed more than one item and you needed a brand story. So I was like, okay, I need a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, and I need a hat. And I was like, the hat is gonna make it look and feel like it's a real uh, brand. I was like, not everyone can make hats and I needed a floral brim underneath it, right? And so I remember, calling Alibaba, which is, you guys should check out, but it's like the Chinese website for factories uh, in China. And so I was call and emailing all of these Alibaba things for hats. Cause so I was like, look, everyone can make a t-shirt. Everyone can make a hoodie, but not everyone can make a custom uh, hat with floral brim and two tone snap. So there's a yellow snap and a pink snap. Anyways, so I finally, after 10 samples through uh, Alibaba, so I emailed probably 20 factories, asked for pictures of those pictures. I then sent my designs, which was just like Photoshop as much as I could with drawings. And then I got 10 samples. And of the 10, only one fit the criteria that I wanted. I was like, okay, this is my factory. They can do it. Let me run it. So I randomly ordered 10, uh, probably like 50 hats from China, got them in, they had the floral brim. And I was like, wow, this is a real piece. Like I'm a real designer. I made this from scratch. It's custom. It's not using a blank. And so anyways, I launched it on this website with the kid that I met. And I remember at the time, 
I was a very big Mac Miller fan and Mac and Mac Miller is my age. And so uh, I had known all like I would researched obviously as a fan and I'd seen and friended all of his friends on Facebook. Kind of weird, but I did it. And one of his friends, I messaged on Facebook and I was like, yo man, just dropped, uh, just launched this kid's super brand. Um, here's my collection. I got this tie dye shirt. I know you'll love it. And so he loved the tie dye shirt. And he was like, yo, send a, send a box, uh, send a box to this address. And I remember being like, damn, if I send this box to the address, like, I don't know if they'll actually get it. It's kind of a shot in the dark. Why would he choose my brand over all the other brands? So um, I said, actually, if you guys are in New York, I'll just come drop it off if you ever are on tour. Because I knew part of the Kid Super brand was meeting me and feeling the energy that I brought and knowing that it was a real thing and there's a real person behind it. And yeah, so I was like, uh, I'll drop it off. And he responded, we're in New York right now. Come through. We're shooting a music video. And he sent me the address and I was like, oh my God, this is crazy. So I, I packed up and I, 10 minutes later was at uh, the photo uh, music video shoot with Mac Miller. And I was like, man, this is crazy. I just launched the Kid Super brand. Like, I wonder what he's going to say. And he comes up and he's like, yo, you're the t-shirt kid. Yeah, let me see it. And I'm like, here, here. He's like, fire, fire. Starts putting it on, talking, chit chat. And he's like, he was so enthusiastic and awesome. And I thought at the time, like rappers were like too cool, too cool for school, would be in the corner, wouldn't even talk to me, send his assistant or whatever. And he was so, bam, put it all on instantly, took pictures, was telling me like, yo, how long you been doing this? Whoa, this is fire, man. Keep sending me pieces. Da, 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 da. And he goes back to the music video. And I'm like, oh my God, he's about to wear Kid Super in a music video. Cause that's huge. You know, that at that time, that was how anyone found out about your brand basically was music videos um, or blogs. And I had no connections with blogs. So the director calls like, okay, we're filming. And then the stylist comes and puts, and I'm like, oh man, he's about to wear the clothes. And then I didn't realize, but they were shooting a, uh, uh, like a mobster casino scene. And so everyone changed into suits and I'm like, ah, fuck, this was my opportunity, but this was amazing. I'm awesome. So I say bye to them and leave. And I'm like, man, what a crazy experience. This is awesome. Anyways, three months later, uh, Mac Miller drops blue slide park. And, uh, that has like a, um, Blue Side Park has like a painting as an album art. And so for his press release pictures, they used a photo shoot of him. And in those pictures was my hat with the floral brim. And I was like, oh my God. And when it dropped, it was on the cover of iTunes. And yeah, so three months later after dropping or meeting him, the hat was on the cover of iTunes. And I remember calling my mom like, I made it. I'm on the cover of iTunes. Da, 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 da. I'm going to get you guys the picture right now. But uh, yeah, that was the story of kind of the first person who ever supported Kid Super and wore it. So shout out Mac Miller. Um, wait, I, I'm going to get the picture. Uh, if you guys have any questions right now, you can uh, type them in the chat. Uh, hey, Colin, well, I, we have a couple of questions if you want to answer um, a few before you uh, open your screen. Um, we had a question from Anna who asked, um, how did you go about building another team when you beyonce Okay. Fuck. Wow. Wait up. Sorry. Open image. That's funny when I Beyonce. No. Wow. This is the blurriest picture of all time. But here we are. Um how did I find another team? I didn't have a team. Um, and that was my, another thing I was like, look, if you're going to start a brand and if you want people to join your team, you have to be working 10 times harder than everyone else. It's like the captain of a, a boat captain dies with the ship. So I knew if I was going to be on say, right. And do it myself, I needed to prove to everyone that I was a brand worth working with or working for and it's like my best friends were down to help but they weren't down to like drop everything 
uh, and work for me or we weren't, it was never like we're doing it together. It was more like, oh, Colm's doing this. He has projects left and right. Like, let's see what happens. I mean, I would love to interview or ask some of my friends what they initially thought, like what was going to happen with Kid Super because I was just doing it all alone, building, just asking anyone to help me and st- stuff like that. But never did I have like a team. You, you don't really have a team when you're starting off. You're just testing the waters, you know? Some people start with three people that are, or that's their brand and that's their, uh, their group, which you can start. But I think focusing so much on like success, team, money, all that stuff early on will kind of hinder you because you're really just working on, can it work? Is this a brand that's reliable, blah, 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 blah. And then you'll figure out all that stuff. Um, after okay i'm gonna share my screen bam share okay do you see it i don't even know how you guys respond yes okay blurriest picture ever because it's from my facebook but yeah there's blue slide park and there's mac miller and there's my hat so pretty fucking cool um i was really excited about it obviously and so i think this is also pretty cool so in the early days of Kid Super, every order I would get, I would draw on the packages. So this is some this is some hats going out, and I would paint on all the packages, and I'd write letters. And so depending on if you had a funny name or not, I would just say like, hey, John Snow, if that was your name, it was like, how's it working on game of thrones or something stupid like that and then i'd write like thank you so much for supporting and i think that's the benefit you have when you're a small brand is to do stuff like that because you can really build a fan base you know it's not like gucci's handwriting you a letter from fucking antonio gucci or whoever it was uh and so this was my I was so happy and excited that random people were buying my clothes that I'd write letters and stuff. And you can, you grow from there, you build a community. And I think that's what you need to do in 2020 um, to build a brand. Okay. So this is a great picture as well. So sophomore year, I'm moving into my dorm and the brand is not taking off, but this is the first collection. And so that's how many t-shirts I have. So what, two hoodie, uh, a sweatshirt, a hoodie, two t-shirts. Yeah, three t-shirts. So I spray painted my dorm, as you see, the walls. And I put racks of clothes and kids would come into that dorm room and buy from that collection. And the dean ended up finding out about my my store that I was like selling out of the dorm which they didn't like and they basically kicked me out of dorms and said I had to change and paint all the walls and blah 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 which obviously painting the walls in a dorm is crossing the line which I agree but selling the clothes is not so I dressed up in a tuxedo and made a powerpoint presentation about why I should actually be the face of housing and why NYU is not Harvard and I'm Mark Zuckerberg (laughs) quite funny so anyways then since I had built this like dorm room store I always had this idea that like maybe I could just live in the back of a store and so when I got kicked out of the dorms I was like fuck you guys I'm gonna go live in my own store and I'm gonna create this building and so I was randomly searching all around the internet and I was looking through uh different places and i found this place on craigslist and i'd already like applied to 10 places and they all rejected me and this place on craigslist had a bathtub and i remember calling the landlord and being like i'm in i don't know where this space is it was very cheap i'm in and the guy was like all right like do you want to see it i was like no i'll sign the lease right now and because i had not seen a store with a bathtub yet and I was like, fuck, if it has a bathtub, I can 100% live in the back. Anyways, it ended up being one stop from Manhattan in Brooklyn, right next to where the old Mishka store used to be, and had two floors in the back, a little backyard, and a basement with a 
uh, uh, with a bathtub in it. And I was like, holy shit, this is perfect. So anyways, I had three months of free rent. Um, oh, I think it's important to say that my parents, so this first collection costs like a $2,000 to one to $3,000. I'm not sure. And I was in college at the time. And obviously that's a decent amount of money. And my parents had seen me in high school making t-shirts, etc. So they lent me the money. So I, people always ask, so my parents were very supportive. So my parents gave me the 3k to start. Um, and I was in college. So I didn't really need any money to live and stuff like that. And then from there, ever since then, I've been kind of self funding from the sales and through artwork a lot of the time. So what you don't know about clothing is let's say this is $3,000, right? You can probably make 15 K from that. So profit is about 12 K give or take whatever. So let's say 10 K that's 10 K profit, right? If you want to buy a new collection, let's say I spent 3K on my last one, most likely my next collection is going to be bigger. So I need 5K to hold. But if you're young and you have 10K and you're spending stuff on different projects and stuff, sometimes it's hard to remember that you need to hold the 5K to order the next collection. So a lot of the time I would spend all of the money and not have enough money to reorder. So it would look like, oh, the brand's good, the clothes sold, but I don't have enough money to reorder. So a lot of the times how I made money was I would do album arts and posters and music videos and sell art and ad campaigns with brands, brand partnerships. That has kept me alive completely. And also having a really almost never a team, just friends to help out. So never having to pay salaries. So all that helped. Anyways, I thought that's important because people always ask me about money and stuff. Then, I, so I'm a junior in college. I find this space. I move into this store with a girlfriend because I needed someone to uh, pay half the rent. And because I loved her. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, fuck. Anyways, so I moved in and I launched an opening store, right? And so... I was like, what am I, how am I going to open this? It was a complete blank canvas. I was like, well, I had just painted the walls in my dorm. I should probably paint the walls of the store, which is what you're looking at. Oh, stop share. Back to me, walls of the store painted. Um, and so I was like, okay, I got to paint the walls. I got to open the store. I have to have a concert. And I was like, okay, uh, we should get musicians um, that should perform and at the time i had met the underachievers which if you're not familiar with the underachievers they're an amazing duo from brooklyn they're in the beast coast collective which is with flatbush zombies and joey badass and basically ultimately connected to the asap mob and basically everyone in new york is somewhat connected and at the time they were super into their chakras and I had had this Indian fabric that my mom sent me because my parents were living in India. As I said before, they move every fucking year or two years. So they started, kept moving, kept moving. So my mom had sent me this Indian fabric and I was chopping up the Indian fabric. Ooh, I'll show you a picture. This is great. This is great. Where the fuck is this picture? Okay, Kid Super. Where are my Indian t-shirts? Ah, here we are. Okay, sharing screen. Sharing. This is bringing back, you know, emotional memories, guys. You know, this is, this is crazy times. Okay, so this is, okay, grand opening. Can I click this? Grand opening. This is me painting the walls, which are still now painted. Um, are you guys seeing this? It's pretty good yeah. stuff. Okay, cool. This is me, shirtless, great picture. But you see in the shirt to the left of me, there's an Indian fabric in between those shirts. So I was cutting up Indian fabrics and then I was learning op grand opening. That's me as a baby. Okay. Me as a baby, not really important. Oh, this is me sewing together those shirts. These are my best friends from high school that don't know how to sew, but we were sewing from the house, the apartment. Oh, this is my dad in the Indian shirt with the, with the sleeves on the side. Wow. Wow, this is pretty fucking cool. Me on Craigslist, getting a couch, friends coming together, to drive me. These were my initial tech packs. Kind of crazy. 
this was the basement that you looked like shit and now i'll show you uh before and after but this is amazing because we were making the recording studio back in the day um okay so wait i'm moving forward moving forward oh grand opening with the chalk putting up the sign handmade hand painted sign um oh this was the first website wow this is fucking amazing so i hand drew everything in the website so you could click everything low key this website's better than my current website i think so yeah that was a cool website i drew everything everything was clickable wow guys are you getting emotional i'm getting I'm emotional. so this is the t-shirts that i was talking about which this t-shirt still fucking hits so by the way I've always been a little bit talented, <laughs> but this was, wow. I should re-release this t-shirt. This t-shirt's incredible. This might still might be the best t-shirt I've ever seen. 433 weeks ago. Oh my God, kill myself. That was so long ago. Okay, so that was, where am I going? Okay, so the interview, the, the launch of the store. Okay, we're back. Stop sharing. We're back. Launch of the store. Um, we have this concert. I had never thrown an event before, so I did it from 12 noon to 12 at midnight, which is a hilarious time to do an event because no one knows when to actually come because it's a 12 hour event. So people were like in and out. It was ran uh, hilarious stories. Anyways, the underachievers decide to perform in the basement. Flatbush zombies come gashy performs now global superstar T shine performs now signed to YSL has a thong with just came out with a song with young thug and meek mill um gashy has a song with fucking sting now underachievers are lesbians flat or are legends lesbians did i say lesbians <laughs> legends <laughs> the underachievers are lesbians now no legends uh then gashy i mean what I, my point of this story is a lot of people at that time were not successful but if you're doing stuff and you create this community, you don't know where anyone's going to end up. So it was pretty fucking crazy to be like in a cultural hub because everybody was hustling. And if you're hustling, you wanted to be around hustlers. So you don't really know. Everyone always asks me, um, how did you get all these rappers to wear your clothes or whatever? And it's like, man, I was there day one with a lot of these people and they grew. And so a great example. And Everyone always asks me, but Russ, the rapper. So, okay. Anyways, store. I have this store opening. It's amazing. I'm high on life. I don't really know what to do. Next day, I'm like, what do I do now? And so I'm like, oh, um, what do I do now? And I'm like, fuck, I just created a store to sit in. So I, I was going to school two days a week. So all my school classes were packed on monday tuesday i'd work the store wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday and we were closed on mondays anyways so i was just sitting there and the brand wasn't popping at all i mean if you see down below i am getting like 20 likes a picture so that translates to basically negative 50 sales uh and so i'm like fuck i did all this work and now I'm just sitting here all day waiting for people to come into this store that no one knows about and nobody wants to close. I was like, wait, I control this store. I can do anything. And so I was like, I'm going to make my utopia and it's going to demand people to come in. So I was like, okay, I'm going to build a recording studio in the basement. I'm going to turf the backyard. I'm going to build a, a, a room that's like a sewing area. I'm going to put in uh, racks, which you can see on the ceiling right there for photo shoots. And so I had Converse had reached out. This is actually quite funny. So I had a friend who interned at an agency that was looking for cool people for Converse to take pictures of, to like be ambassadors, right? So they called me in as a consultant because I knew everybody cool in New York because I'm from New York, but I was also in the culture and wanting these cool people to wear Kid Super. So they were asking me about it. And I was like, yes, no, yes, no. And they were basically just on Tumblr. And they were like, you're pretty cool. And I was like, I agree. I think, you know, you should use me. I, I don't know if I'm the cool now, but I believe that I'll be cooler. And so they're like, all right, we like you. Like we pick you for this Converse thing. And I was like, cool. 
So they sh- tell me to show up and I'm like, they get, I get there and they're like, it's $5,000. And I'm like, I have to pay $5,000 to be in this. And they were like, no, we're giving you $5,000. I was like, you're giving me $5,000 for these pictures. And they were like, yeah. And I was like, say less. And I was like, bam, bam, modeled, right? They give me the $5,000 and this is the most money I've ever made. And so I'm like, wow, I can do anything. So I dropped the $5,000 on building the best recording studio in the basement. Right. And I was like, I don't even make music, but I was like, this is going to be a cultural hub and music and kids super has always been intertwined from the launch of the brand and the party. So I'm like, I'm going to build this recording studio. And so, uh, I, I knew I wasn't going to build the best one, but I knew I could build the coolest one. Right. And so I was like, what does it need to build the coolest one? And I was like, well, it needs a sliding M and M machine door to get in. So it's hidden. And so wait, let me show you a video. You can, y'all can ask some questions now. I'm not even reading the questions. So just add, ask the chats. Yeah. We have a couple of questions for you. Um, right, go, go, go. <laughs> Okay, we're gonna do rapid fire. Um, so one question was, what's the importance, uh, or how would you explain the importance between quantity and quality? Which one's more important when you're starting out? Okay, so this is another thing that everyone is always obsessed about. They're like, my first collection has to be this amazing collection because this is gonna define my brand and da da da. I come here to tell you that it doesn't fucking matter. No one cares about your first collection if you don't do a second collection, you know? So everyone is so scared to release and think they're going to be judged. My first t-shirt sucked, but I did them and it led to my second t-shirt and that led to my third t-shirt. And here we are, right? We're in Paris Fashion Week, just got the LVMH prize semifinalist, which I'm not supposed to tell anyone. But what I'm telling you is like, go for it. Don't be overly obsessed with if it's perfect because there's going to be times when you have a brand where you're not going to be able to control the perfectness of it, right? So you have to be nimble. I've done factory orders from uh, factories where the, br- the item is completely different than what I designed and you just have to run with it. You can't send it back because they won't take it and you can't not sell it because how are you going to you know make money for your next collection? So a lot of you... It's not so much a quantity over quality, but it's like a release it, be confident in yourself, you know? So that's what I have to say to that. Is there a next question? We literally have a ton. (laughs) Let's go. Um, Bam, bam, bam. Last question. What was the music video with Mac Miller that you stepped in on? Uh, Smile. Smile, I think. Smile. Okay, got it. I think. Next question. Favorite piece all time. Favorite piece all time. That fucking t-shirt I just showed you was legendary. Um, the kissing jacket I just released is pretty good. The hand felted stuff is really good. Um, smile back. Let's go. Um, okay. Next question. I mean, I'll show you some good stuff later, but yeah. Favorite um, piece. Yeah. Next question. Um, how do you get brand partnerships? Oh, okay. Favorite, favorite uh, piece. Sorry, I'm going back to that question. So <laughs> um, let me let me get, actually get this picture. Okay, I, I'm getting sidetracked, but it's good. Okay, so I'm sharing my screen. How do I do this? Share my screen, share my screen, bam, share. Okay, can you see this? So yes, this is Russ opens his old studio. It's been a long time coming. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna take the audio off because whatever. Okay, so this is Russ, and obviously this is where he used to record. Where the hell is this T-shirt? Where's this scene? Where is this scene? Um, Okay, that's – oh, nope. That's me. Oh, okay, okay. It's in the beginning. So that's the store. This is the walls. This is Russ. This is the basement. Russ used to live in the basement. Okay, are you guys ready? Here's the M&M machine. How legendary is that? Slide. I built the whole thing. I chopped it off. I stole it. It's a long story for another time. But yeah, this is the recording studio that Russ 
walked into. We built, I built everything by hand, painted it. Oh, that table is bowling alley wood that I got donated, that chair. I mean, this is beautiful. Okay, so my favorite piece, kid super running as fast as you can. Images, please come up, please come up running as fast as you can. Great, great, did not come up. I think it was WWD, where is this thing? Oh, um, okay, here you go. Whatever, we'll watch the video. But my favorite piece is this one. Okay, so the reason why it's this one is I had just been rejected for the second time from the official calendar. And for those that don't know, having a fashion show or throwing a fashion show is one of the hardest, and I've done many different things in my life. It's one of the hardest, most economically, spiritually, financially draining projects ever. And it only lasts eight minutes, right? And so you spend all this money, you get all these people involved, you have this crazy idea, and then it's over in eight minutes. So uh, this was my second time attempting. So I just would go to Paris and throw a fashion show and hope that the Federation would see it enough to put me on the official calendar. The official calendar puts you with Louis Vuitton, Dior. It gives you a time slot. You're part of it. So this was my second time trying and I just got rejected. And so I printed the rejection letter on a silk dress and I had this girl walk out as the first look just to show that the rejection was just a, as much a part of the brand as the success. And I love this because it shows like, look, try, try, try again. You'll um, end up succeeding. And so the next show was the claymation show. Um, and I uh, was officially part of the um uh, calendar and I finally claymation. Let's see if it's stop motion. Bam. Um, boom, boom, boom. Okay. And this is Ronaldinho and that is printed my acceptance letter. So I think that's pretty cool. So yeah, that's my, my favorite piece is this rejection silk dress. Um, all right, back to some questions, I guess. Yeah, um, a question that we had, which we actually were planning to tackle, um, was um, how do you go about pitching for brand partnerships? Um, okay. And I know we talked about that with the um, HBO um, pitch. Oh, oh, okay, 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 okay. And good, the good. good, okay, I got that. So yeah, we were going to get to this, but so for brand partnerships, one, you have to be honest with yourself. They're not going to just randomly give it to you just for being human. You have to have something going for you if it's a community or buzz or you're trying really hard or you're blah, 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 or like they want to feel something. So, but once you do get these brand partnerships, you got to really shoot for the moon, but in a way where you really go above and beyond. And so, as she was saying, I've worked with Puma and Jägermeister continuously for the past couple of years. And one of the main reasons was how hard I went. So the first time I met Jägermeister, they said, can we sponsor your art gallery? And I was like, yeah, you can bring some alcohol for sure. People like drinking during art galleries. And so I remember telling my friends, I was like, someone from Jägermeister is just dropping off some Jäger. So when the Jäger comes, just like get some cups. And she ended, she asked me how many people were going to come. And I was like, probably like 100, 200. Who's going to come to a fashion show? Who's going to come to a fashion show in like the rain? You know what I mean? Uh, oh, it was raining. Ah, fuck. I'm not even talking right. I'm just trying to Google while, uh, while I'm talking, which is not working. But... Um, she asked how many people I said a hundred because it was snowing and it was a gallery and I'm not really known for having a gallery though. The art was, the art was great. Um, well, sorry. Um, anyways, she ended up coming with a full bar 
And I was like, what? And she had staff. And I was like, well, I thought you were dropping off just a piece of Jaeger. And, and on my end, 800 people ended up coming. And she was like, what the fuck? You said 100. And I was like, well, you know, guess people like kids super. So she was impressed with me. And I was super impressed with her. Um, and so, okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Okay, now I'm going to show you guys. Okay, 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 okay. Share screen, share screen. So anyways, this was the art show that uh, we did. So so this is, this is, oh my God, my friends are screaming. So yeah. Oh, I never told you, but in that building, that store that I found, the top two floors moved out uh, like a year and a half after. And I told all my friends to move in and I was like, we'll create this cultural vibe. It'll be this building that everybody will come to. It'll be a staple in New York city. Fast forward. It is that. So anyways, wait, someone's walking into the store. Yo, I'm teaching a class like super serious. And they just heard you scream. Really? Dead ass. All right. <laughs> um, Are you done? in like an hour, I think. I don't know when I'm done. Um, yeah. So all my friends live upstairs. So that was what I was trying to tell you guys. And I was, and what I'm, what a huge part about this is everyone's always asking. Um, everyone's always asking, how do you get people to like work with you or blah, blah, blah. And I was so passionate. I was like, I was like the fucking guy from 300. This is sparta and that's how i felt about kid super and so everyone came behind kid super because i was so energetic i was so enthusiastic they're like fuck this he's not gonna fail because he believes in it so much i guess i'm gonna help him and support him and so that's really how i got so many people to move into the store and how i got so many people to help and support the brand what the fuck am i talking about now what's the next question <laughs> i feel like i'm I feel like I'm all over the place, you know, people coming from left and right, but, uh, <laughs> the question was about pitching, uh, uh, pitching, pitching. Great question. Glad I crushed that answer. Okay. We're back. I'm going to share this screen. So pitching, 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 share screen. So anyways, this, so Jägermeister's slogan, right. Was be the Meister. And I did not like that slogan because I was like, what does this even mean? What is a Meister? And I was like, it's, I don't even know. I mean, like we understand Jaeger is German, but like, what does be the Meister even mean? And I also felt like, what does, I'm not a big alcohol drinker ever, but when I do drink alcohol, what is the, like the most important part? Like, what do I like the best about alcohol? It's not like drinking it sad in your room. It's like, oh, let's celebrate. There's moments of celebrating. And I was like, okay, but what am I truly celebrating with alcohol? I was like, friendship. And so I was like, Jägermeister, I want to change your slogan. And she was like, what the hell are you talking about, Colin? Like, I just sponsored a gallery. Shut up. And I was like, no, like, I think I have a really good idea to like change your slogan and help you guys out. She's like, I literally am not asking you for a slogan. Can you just fucking focus on making art? And I was like, well, if I make a pitch, would you be willing to look at it? And she was like, yes, if you make a pitch, I'll look at it. So this, me and Foda spent like a week building a website called jaeger.kidsuper.agency. So you guys can go to it. And we... <laughs> explained why a toast to friendship should be the slogan that's me and danny which is hilarious because so anyways she started seeing this uh pitch and she was like holy fuck this is amazing let me show my boss so she showed her boss her boss was like holy fuck this is amazing let's show the cmo of jaeger which is chief marketing officer he like flew in from germany to and i had to present pitch him and I dressed up in a suit and I went to their headquarters in uh, upstate New York and I pitched this and what is hilarious was there's just a naked picture of me and Danny on the pitch but anyways toast to friendship forged in moments of brilliance strengthened from years of effort perfected through trial and error mastered by patience and, pa and balance am I talking about Jägermeister or am I talking about friendship 
<laughs> so ethos, centuries old tradition. This is the ethos of Jägermeister. Why friendship? Friendship, cro- it, it cuts across all conceivable socio-demographic lines. Relatable. Everyone can relate with great times of friends. I mean, do you want me to do this whole presentation? I don't think so. But our generation now is optimistic, hopeful, boundaryless. The internet has create, connected all of us. They want authentic, authenticity. Jaeger re, uh, reeks of it. <laughs> yeah, what is Jaegermeister? I looked up what Jaegermeister is. The power of the toast. Jaegermeister Academy. Jaeger After Dark. Fears. Past slogans. Old commercials. And then I even quoted like uh Ciroc concepts oh man so yeah we went so fucking hard and then and then i fucking shot a commercial it's 55 seconds <laughs> can't work with these freaking amateurs! All right, all right, it's okay, we'll get it. Actors, let's take a break. Hit the break room, be back on set in 10 minutes. You've done sound before. What are you, that, 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 the Charlie Chaplin film? Hey. Long day. You do a lot of caveman work? I do. I find it really helps with the evolution of my acting. <laughs> How long have you been doing it? About a million years. <laughs> Cheers to new friends. Jägermeister, a toast to friendship. <laughs> ah, gets me, gets me every time. It was classic Geico ripoff Jägermeister commercial. So we went so above and beyond, right? And so obviously they had to support and everything. Um, and so that was how I started with my pitch for Jägermeister. So for those questions of how you work with brands, it's like really pitch as much as you can. Also, I want, I, you guys aren't chatting enough, but can people give me 10 out of 10 for that commercial? It's pretty hilarious. Um, 10 out of 10, thank you. I needed that. Come on. There's only one 10 out of 10, 10 out of a thousand, which is okay. Good, good. Finally, finally. Thank you. 69 needed that one. Um, okay. Wow. Okay. This is a lot. Okay. Okay. Nice. 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 Okay. You can all, you guys can stop now. You guys can stop now. We got it. We got it. Thank you. All right. More questions. More questions. Um, all right. I can ready. also briefly show you my Puma pitch if you guys are interested. Yeah. Um, definitely show the Puma one or the HBO one. Oh, fuck the HBO one. That's so good. You're so that one rough. really blew me away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sh- okay. 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 Share screen. Well, we're going for a couple pitch decks, but I, I'll be quick with this. So this was the kid super Palmeiras Puma pitch. So we got the Puma collab and then we were like, okay, how can we grow on this? And we're like, it would be really cool to do something with Palmeiras. It's a soccer team. So I show a highlight of me soccer. This is our past collection. Then this is really cool. So if you guys are familiar with the face camo, um, we thought it would be really cool to add that to the jersey, but also, um, wait up. Okay, here it's restarting. So, okay. So I took the players and I b- made the faces from them so that the faces were built out of the players, which I thought was pretty cool. And then, then I said, look, we could build kid super soccer fields all over the world. This one's in Sao Paulo. This one's in New York city, YouTube original. Then this, I was like, this could be our Palmeiras collab, et cetera, et cetera. There I am wearing the Jersey. These are our fans that wore the past jerseys. So from all these people, this is portfolio, et cetera, et cetera. So that's how hard we went with that pitch, but the HBO one's better. Okay, let me, okay, here it is. So look at the load. The load is so good. So I wanted a Kid Super HBO TV show and I also wanted a Netflix show. And so we had a meeting with HBO and I, me and Foda rebuilt HBO's website so that it only features Kid Super videos. 
And then if you search, it plays some kid super big L. Oh wow, big L compilation. Home features gives you oh my fails. So oh, we're off to a slow start. That's hilarious. Um yeah, then there's a description, the log line of the show, the background, list of accomplishments. Yeah, so we also did Netflix too, but let me see if it's if it's still there. Oh yeah, Netflix is probably even better. So you can click in column and then yeah, these are all the videos and then movies. Well, we're missing the log line, but yeah. So stop sharing. Yeah, uh, that's pretty fucking amazing, if you ask me. We went so hard, but Netflix didn't give us a show yet, so that's pretty depressing, but we're uh, trying, uh, trying. All right, so on to the next class. <laughs> Last question. Favorite okay. soccer team, and what position did you play? Okay, favorite soccer team. My mom is from Spain, so I'm a Real Madrid fan. I know it's like liking the Yankees. I'm upset like you're upset. But it was just my grandfather and me used to watch him. And I, yeah. And then I played center mid. Um, okay, let me get back to my guidelines, my missions. Okay. Brand identity, helpful skills I recommend you to hone on, in on. So for those of you who aren't in school for design, I think what you should get good at, what you should attend is YouTube University and learn how to Photoshop Illustrator, Illustrate, fo how to use Photoshop and Illustrator. And then Premiere is for editing music vi or videos. And then I, I would, how I started was I was just flipping logos. So I was making like New York kicks, not instead of New York Knicks. I did New York Strangers instead of New York Rangers. I took the shirt off of the Wendy's girl logo, which is debatably appropriate now. But at, at the time, uh, I thought it was, you know, it was a different time. Um, oh, uh, okay. And then brand identity. I mean, I've hammered this in a million times, but having this brand that has a story is so fucking important. You want people to be able to, they don't care about the product, but they care about the story. I think Nike does an incredible job at it. You know, you don't even know what it, what the product's going to be, but you know that it's going to push you to just do it, to improve yourself as an athlete, to improve yourself as a fashion person. You feel the energy of uh, Nike, you feel the energy of Red Bull, you feel the energy of some of these big brands. So Supreme, even they have, they haven't changed who they are since day one. They just got super, 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 super huge, but you still feel the skateboarder, the raw, the raw gritty videos, and then their product line and how difficult their fucking website is. That's part of the brand. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Some people were asking about trademarking loans, investors. So trademarking, I think it's not as important as people think it is. Everyone thinks it's important, but just start making your brand. I mean, if you can get Kid Super at on Instagram or kidsuper.com, which is what I got early on, the kid upstairs has it, Antonio. Um, sorry, someone's in here. Get the fuck out of here. I'm just kidding, guys. <laughs> That's like my best friends. Um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, what was I saying? <laughs> okay, trademarking. Yeah. So actually, it's funny. I just tried to get Kid Super trademarked in the UK just now, right? 10 years into the game. And they denied me. Because Kid Super, they said, is a descriptor of a clothing rather than a name. So it can't be trademarked. So you can't even trademark Kid Super in some places. So, I mean, I'm, I'm fighting it. But, oh, also, China had already trademarked Kid Super, like scammers, because before I was able to. And my Puma collaboration was at risk because... China had already trademarked and China's a huge market for this kid super Puma. So actually Puma's lawyers are fighting my case, which is actually quite beneficial for me. So I think I've been a little bit lucky. So yes, if you want to trademark, yes, but don't 
guys, that's not what you're doing this for. You know what I mean? We're doing this because we love designing. We love making clothes. We love meeting people. We love creating. So it's like, if you're focused on the trademarking and all this bullshit before you start, I feel like your heart's in the wrong place. Investors and loans. It really depends on if your financial situation. Do you need it? Do you not need it? Is the person that's investing in you uh, a person that uh, believes in the brand and and as a person besides money can help you? I think that always makes sense. For me, I've never taken investment and people are asking a lot now and it's just, it's always been like a little weird. I always felt a little weird. Yes, building an audience, part two. Great, we're only on part, oh, there's only three parts. Okay, we're good. <laughs> This is a common audience. question in the Q&A as well, like how you built your audience and yeah, any yeah, tactics yeah. you have for them. Guys, am I am I crushing this? <laughs> um, okay, I see some I see some questions here. Crushing it, crushing it. Okay. Um, how to build your audience. So everyone always asks me like, oh, Colm, you're so forward facing of your brand. Like you're not hidden designer. I actually had a Vogue or Le Officiel interview and she was like, um, do you think your shenanigans on Instagram uh, hinder yourself from being taken seriously as an artist? And I was like, tell me how you really feel. You know, I was like, do you think that? And she was like, yes, I do. And she was specifically talking about me ice skating butt naked in my backyard and posting it on Instagram. And I explained to her that Kid Super brand is built around the authentic authenticity of who I am. And people become uh, and become a fan of the brand because they're a fan of me and because I haven't changed or altered since. Yeah, is she here? Top bottom and grand bottom. Is Liv here? Oh, the Jägermeister woman's here. Bring her in. Okay. Because we've been but talking. There's no top, bottom, and gray? Yeah, she's going to be super mad at us. No, what, top, bottom, oh, no, she wants pink. She wants pink. It's right there. She didn't want gray. The 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 woman from Jägermeister is here. We could get her two cents. She'll come. I think we'll get her two cents. So, yeah, for, uh, for me, there wasn't even an option to be hidden. But not everyone is column. You, you have your own things that make you tick and make you special. So I think that's when you're creating a brand, you want to attack something like that. Should be there. If it's not there, then it's downstairs, but she wants a pink medium. Just t uh, top and bottom? I don't know, but bring her both. But um, yeah, I mean, for all of you out there that what is your thing that makes you tick? Or you're just a designer and you want to be more hidden and you, you want your clothing to speak for itself. Like that's all a, a route. I think you just have to figure out who you are and what you want to represent. For me, I was always this like outlandish, silly person. And so it was authentic for me to be that moving forward. And so, yes, Vogue, I might have shenanigans that take me away from art, but just focus on the art. That's a pretty fucking good painting right there, right? So it's not um, a related uh, question um, is, um, how do you like connect with other people or start networking? Networking, be enthusiastic. I have an intern kid that came over uh, today and he has like 30,000 followers on TikTok. I don't even have a TikTok. And he's like, dude, what are you doing? You could have a huge TikTok. And he was like, can I help run your TikTok? And I was like, Oh, well, like I wasn't really paying attention and he just kept bugging me. And I was like, yeah, dude, you can run my fucking TikTok. Come over and film some stuff. And he's come every day. And that's what I'm talking about networking. You just got to Like no one's going to say no to you. Really. If you're passionate, willing to work, willing to be humble. I know people might think I'm not, I'm not as uh, humble, but I am very humble, very hardworking, and will do bitch work. I've done so much bitch work for so many people that I've gotten no money for, you know? Like, I can think about for the underachievers, right? They perform, I feel like I owe them so much, right? And so I designed their hats, right? I got no money for it, but that's not what I'm saying. But I, I shipped out all of their hats. 
And if you've ever shipped out stuff, it's miserable. So I was running their PayPal and everything for them uh, when they first started out. And that's because I was learning. I didn't, I wasn't busy. I was doing it. I worked my, I mean, for Russ, we let Russ live in the basement for our whole lives. I did every album art. We did a music video. I mean, like, you just got to be willing to work and push it and don't fucking I hate when people if someone if I'm and I consider myself artistic right and passionate and, and love doing what I'm doing if someone if I hit someone up right and I'm like hey let's work on a project together and their first response is what's the budget instant out I'm like I even right now saying it pisses me off I'm like dude we invented this world. We're doing what we want. Who gives a fuck about the budget? The budget's going to come. You know what I mean? Like you're going to get the money once you do good. So yeah, if so, I get some kids will be like, oh, cool. Or what's the budget? I'm like you're not good enough to be asking for the budget. You got to have like 20 years, have kids, have an illustrious career to be asking for the budget. If you're just a regular ass person, yeah, do not ask me for the budget. So yeah, I you can get paid and you should be paid, but that should never you I don't even think you should be paid sometimes. Just fucking love the experience. Obviously, you need money to survive, but I mean, yeah. What was my question? <laughs> <laughs> um I <laughs> the question was just how do you like stay connected to others or network and um, um, yeah, I mean, I feel like that's, that's the, that's the world. I mean, yeah. Another thing that people also don't understand is like, if many of you are familiar with, uh, um, Foda, he's Foda Farm on Instagram. He's like the most involved left hand man sidekick of this kid super experience. When I met him, he didn't know how to do anything. He was just a goalkeeper on my soccer team. And how we really became friends is he was like a video game person and really good at computer video game stuff. And he was good at uh, you torrenting like movies and video games. And I was like, yo, can you get me Photoshop and Illustrator for free? And he was like, yeah, no problem. And so he got me uh, my first Illustrator and Photoshop hacked crack. We didn't pay for it. And that's how he became like interested in making stuff and designing because he hacked mine. And I was like teaching him Photoshop. And then from there, since he was a computer person, he was like, oh, computer science. And then he got, and now he's like considered a designer and a website. And then he started making websites and he kind of found himself as I was finding myself and it really worked, but it wasn't like we were, you know, like you have to sometimes grow with the people around you. A lot of the people also always ask, like, how are these famous rappers wearing me, my clothes? And it's because the assistant stylist that I was good, close friends now is the real stylist. And so who are they going to support? The person that supported them when they were small and starting out. And so that's a lot of the ways how these stylists are like, oh, am I going to give Gucci these uh, if I'm going to use Gucci or am I going to use Kid Super? And obviously you have to continue to progress. A lot of people are like, yo, you blew up and you left me, right? The only way they're going to leave you is if you don't elevate. And so that's a great example with me and Russ. We've been collaborating ever since. Russ could get anyone to do his music videos, graphics, merch, blah, blah. blah. But if we're going to be honest, there's not that many people better than me. You know what I mean? So I elevated as he elevated. Obviously, he fucking skyrocketed and crushed me. But you know, we're we're <laughs> we're we're working towards it. But I think that's also something you have to be really honest with yourself. Like, if you're not growing, if you're not progressing, maybe your role is just to help people and not be like the face of the stuff. I think there's an issue with this generation where everyone thinks they have to be CEO or boss, and like this, like, oh, fuck the five, nine to five, and fuck the, you know, you working for the man, and it's like dude this entrepreneur shit is 5 to 5 a.m 5 a.m to 5 a.m and it's not always great and i wish so many times that i wasn't the boss and someone was just telling me what to do but i have a leadership personality and i and not everyone 
not everyone does. And so I think a lot of these people need to, a lot of you, you guys out there should work to help people and don't ever knock the nine to five. And my whole goal, like if you're going to create a successful business, you want to create an environment that is a nine to five. So you guys are work. It just isn't a shitty nine to five, but it's a fun working hard nine to five. I mean, fuck. Someone asked me the other day, when did I last time I went on vacation? And I was like, my life is vacation in my mind or my life is work. It depends on how you look at it. So yeah, I don't go on vacation. I, I sleep in the store. Like my life is this brand. I'm there's no moment where I'm turning it off. So yeah. Um, I don't know what question I answered, but <laughs> well, calm, believe it or not, we actually covered like like throughout this conversation, you've actually answered or covered the rest of the deck. Um, but um, there are a couple more audience questions if you're cool with. Um... All right, we're doing audience Q&A. Oh, um, I'm trying to think about what what's another thing, a important moment. I think another important moment is when I did this Paris Fashion Week thing. And I think I'm just, this will be the, the last thing I bring up. But so you heard my whole story, right? And Paris Fashion Week for many people, especially for me, seemed like this far-fetched, unattainable thing. I knew nothing. I'd never been, I don't even think I've been to Paris before. I don't speak French. And it was, what was the moment was someone came into the store and was like, what's next for you? And I jokingly was like, jokingly was like Paris Fashion Week probably. And they, their reaction was like, oh yeah, cool. When are you going to do that? And I was like, I'm clearly joking, right? It's like when people are like, what are you going to do? And you're like, well, I'll be on Mars. It was like, but the fact that nobody was doubting me because I created this kid super persona, I was like, wow, people really believe I can do anything. I've just been saying it. And then I was like, fuck, I got to go for it. And so that was what's so beautiful about this kid super brand is like, it pushes me to be great. And so I was like, okay, how do we, how do we do Paris fashion week? And so I, I was, it was funny. Some girl came into the store. She was a stylist that brought a friend and we were talking about it. And she was like, her friend was like, you know, I work for a French PR company that does Paris fashion week. And I was like, no. And I, she was like, do you want to meet with my boss? And I was like, I'd love to. And it was kind of a funny miscommunication where I was just going to talk right? I was like, let's see what this is all about. Like, what are the logistics of Paris Fashion Week? And she must have told him that I just wanted to do it. So I go in this meeting, and he just starts planning it. And he's like, Oh, what venue are you looking for? And I was like, Well, uh, my concept for this is a bull in a china shop, because I feel like that's kind of uh, what I'm gonna be. If I go there, I'll be this bull that's knocking things over but at least I'm making noise because I don't belong there but I'm there and then I was also like my mom's from Spain so the iconography of bull is quite beautiful and he was like okay so here are some venues like what are you thinking I was like well a circular venue like a bull ring and we never questioned if I was going to do it or not we just went straight for it and so I was like and we were talking budgets and I was like no one's gonna stop and I was like fuck it let's go for it and I remember being like if I'm gonna do it I have to do it as big as possible and so I had a hundred and eighty thousand dollars in my pocket that's how much money I was making from kids super at the time and as I said before like you still have to hold on to that money to order the next collection but I was like fuck it we just like, this is how much money I can't spend more or less, but let's, let's see. And so the venue rental was this old, uh, circus and it had this circular thing and he showed me it and it was $30,000 a day. And I was like, God damn it. I was like, I'm not, that's too much. And then I was like, if you're going to fucking do this column, you might as well go for it. You only got, you know, like, you don't, you're only got first once. So I was like, fuck it. 30k dropped the 30k then i flew out like all my friends i flew out ock from the underachievers who had supported me the first time i was like you need to walk this my parents came they walked the front row um they were they walked so my dad and mom came and i was like mom no one's ever had their mom walk in their fashion show 
dad, no one's ever had, I think it'd be crazy if you guys walked. So my mom opened the show, my dad opened my best friends. Anyways, I ended up spending $180,000. Um, and it's gorgeous. And it was a defining moment for kids super because it was like, wow, we're now in this world that nobody can say, I can't be in this. Cause also kids super, let's say, it's not like the brand's name is like, uh, Alejandro Le, 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 Le Bleu, Le, you know, some like beautiful fucking name. It's Kid Super, which sounds like a cartoon or something. And I was like, how fire would it be if it's Louis Vuitton, Hermes, Dior, Kid Super? It's like, if we can get into this world, what world can't we get into? And so, fuck. Uh, it ended up being a beautiful, and Vogue uh, wrote an article and it said, in true go big or go home, uh, it, it was like go big or go home, Colin Deland's fashion show. And I was like, that really was the fucking motto, dude. Go big or go home. That's my last story, I think. <laughs> um, we have actually time for one last question. Um, and the question is, if you could go back 10 years and tell your younger self something, what would you say? invest in bitcoin <laughs> no um fuck obviously that's a dumb answer forget i said that answer that was just that was a stupid answer delete that um what would i uh tell myself i think there's what what the human beings often think that they're like too late to start something and it's like, oh, I remember when I was like 13 and I was like, maybe I'll pick up guitar. But there's already kids that were playing guitar. And I was like, oh, I'm too late for guitar. And then when I was 23, I was like, oh, man, I wish I picked up guitar. Uh, but I, I mean, I would have been too late. And then I'm not 33. I'm 28 or 29. But when I'm 33, I'm going to be like, fuck, man, I wish I picked up guitar. And I think that mentality is kind of like you just got to start, you know. And you'll get good at something. So, I mean, 10 years ago, I mean, I'm proud of where I'm at. Uh, I think I would have released certain things. I wish I did more video vlogs. I wish I did more interview series. I wish I did like more films or music, but I'm going to do that stuff. So, and I'm starting now. So, yeah, I mean, like maybe I wish I went to go play professional soccer a little bit, but I'm going to try that now. You know, it's, would you rather, what would you do? But we're at a good spot. So I'm most proud of myself for this kid, super like feel this mentality that I randomly stumbled upon. Amazing. Thank you so much, Colin. That was it. Um, really appreciate your time. Is um, this recorded? Yes, it is. And it's going to be put on our YouTube um, channel as well, which I dropped the link in our chat. If you guys would like to subscribe, that way you're notified. Oh, yeah. Okay. Wait, wait. I'm supposed to shout out cre creatively. Not that I'm <laughs> supposed to, but shout out to uh, creatively for putting this together. And I actually love the concept um, of putting a place for you guys to get jobs in the fashion industry. Because as I said before, when I was starting, it was all trial and error. And there was many times that if you're, you aren't supposed, you aren't ready to be the boss or whatever. And I wish even myself that I'd worked at uh, a clothing company before me, because I would have had all the secrets. I mean, if you look at some of the top brands, Supreme worked at Stussy, uh, Huff worked at Supreme, Supreme and Union worked together. So I think learning from people is very important. And and getting work experience just don't be a douchebag um Sweet. and yeah i mean that's a pretty good oh low-key i might you know put up some kids super creativity job uh love to have your jobs on creatively yeah i'll put up some stuff at kids super i i get a messages a lot about internships and the i will start doing it i just want the reason the hesitation is it's actually quite difficult to organize interns because you have to really tell them what to do so i need like an intern who's the president of the interns but um i hope you guys in 
enjoyed this. Oh, can you repost that YouTube link? Go to Kid Super. Uh, uh, just search Kid Super on YouTube. Kid Super uh, is the YouTube channel. There's mad good videos there. It's actually, I think, criminally underrated my YouTube. So please go subscribe to my YouTube and tell all your friends. And then... I just plugged in the creatively one too, if they want to see this class. Again. Oh, creatively YouTube. I thought we were promoting my YouTube. We're Yours promoting, too. <laughs> we're promoting creativity. Uh, creativity. Um, and yeah, I mean, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It was like a hundred of y'all. So that was good. Uh, if you guys ha think you can help the kid super spirit or whatever, let me know. Um, Give me some comments, you know, give me some applause. I was dead ass staring at a black screen this whole time. So this was pretty fucking weird. Uh, I didn't hear any of your Googles or giggles. So I don't know Googles or giggles. So I don't know if uh, you were laughing or not. So uh, I hope you guys were laughing because that's really all I wanted to do. Um Good. There's giggles. There's giggles. Um, yeah, I can't believe I said lesbian slipped up. Whew, that almost got me canceled. <laughs> the underachievers. Um, but yes, let's go. That was a lot of work. I feel like I'm fucking. Oh, by the way, I just dropped the Puma collection. So y'all should definitely go cop that so you can. Um, so you can support and shout out to the kid super world the more you guys buy the more cool things i can do so help me help the world i guess <laughs> I, I, i'm just reading the chat so keep it up man you know I, I gave you guys two hours just you know that was wonderful you're amazing i think you have great bone structure that would be appreciated not a lot of comments on my bone structure I'm fine. My beautiful <laughs> eyes. Thank you. Um, Quick question: Did fa fa Fashion Week pay off in the end? Um, I think so because it brought me into that world. 